Hi guys, so welcome to a pickups video. I haven't done one for absolutely ages, God knows when the last one was, but I wanna kinda of clear all the new pickups out the way, so then I can do a room tour of this new room for you guys. Um, I just kinda of wanna get the pickups out of the way, otherwise there'll be spoilers obviously. So we've got uh, a few bits. Um, the first bit is this Shika or Shika Arcades t-shirt that I'm wearing. Um, I was chatting to uh, the guy who, who runs the, the Sheikah arcades and makes those amazing arcade sticks for the Super Nintendo. Uh, just chatting to him about something else, some future things he's got in the works and he very kindly sent me a t-shirt um, which is awesome. So uh, I'll be wrapping this on um, a few of my uh, videos and it's just, I don't know how well you can see it, but yeah, there you go. It's just like a breakdown of the of the arcade stick with all the parts, but looks awesome. So yeah, cheers to that if you're watching. I'm, I'm sure you aren't watching, but cheers. Um, so firstly, we've got a couple of Vectrex games now. Frontier, you probably saw I did a little review kind of first impressions video with this. Um, last week did that go up, so check it out if you haven't, but that's from Chris Parsons, Vector Republic. It's basically a Sheriff clone, um, this one, and it's absolutely awesome. Another awesome homebrew kind of indie Vectrex game is Vector Pilot. Um, now, I have recorded a little review first impressions of this as well. And I'm not sure if that's going to go up before this video or not. So either way, either go and check it out or wait and see because it's coming. But this is a real gem. This is a like a clone or a port of, of Time Pilot, the arcade game, which I absolutely love. Love that game. And it's so accurate. It's ridiculous. Um, I got two uh, overlays with it because it comes in like this clamshell case, this one. So the, the overlays don't actually fit inside the case. Um, you just got like a little mini manual and the the game, um, but yeah, he does like various different overlays. So I've got the blue one and the red one there. Um, really cool. Um, let's get some modern stuff out of the way because I do have a couple of modern bits. Oh, there's something over there I need to show you as well. Um, so a couple of modern bits is some Switch stuff. I got uh, a few new Switch games. So, I mean, they, uh, I'm going to struggle to remember how much I paid for all this stuff because it's so old. Some of it's like, you know, over six months old. Um, so, first we've got Thimbleweed Park. Now, if you don't know about this, this is basically um, like a point and click adventure game. And it was made by uh, Ron Gilbert and Gary Winnick, the guys who made Monkey Island, uh, Day of the Tentacle, some of my all time favourite games. And. I don't know if you can see the screenshots on the back there if I it's on manual zoom at the moment if I zoom in there um, but yeah you should be able to see that uh, it's kind of the same interface like the scum interface from the old point-and-click LucasArts games but yeah I've admittedly even though I've had this so long I've only played it for an hour or two but it is really good um, it's got that kind of um, that sense of humour that the Ron Gilbert um, LucasArts adventure games had and really looking forward to getting stuck in and giving this a proper session. Now we're kind of all nearly moved in. Um, we've got about another week to go where I've got to sort out the old house and do the garden and all that so it's a bit hectic at the moment but once that's all done I'll be getting stuck right into that. Um, another one I got, this came up cheap, it's the 30th Anniversary Street Fighter Collection on the Switch and um, it came up sub 20 quid and I thought yeah I'll definitely grab it because it's got, it's got loads of different Street Fighter 2's on it, it's got the original Street Fighter on it, um, but the ones I'm really interested in it's got the Alpha series, Street Fighter, Alpha and then 2 and 3 and then it's got the two Street Fighter, th uh, the three Street Fighter 3's as well. Um, but yeah, the Alpha games are awesome. It's definitely worth having for the Alpha games and uh, nice little collection. So you get 12 games in there. Um, so 12 Street Fighter games for less than 20 quid. No brainer, really. 
Uh, sticking with the same sort of theme, another Capcom collection is I got the Belt Action Collection for the Switch. Now the Belt Ac Action Collection in the West is called something like the Capcom Beat 'em Up Bundle. Um, but it's not available physically. You can get it on PS4 and Switch and what have you, but it's digital. So uh, I ordered this from Japan and um, <clears throat> who got this for me? Do you know what? I think James Busby got this for me um, and I'll leave a link to his like his uh, Facebook page if I can remember down in the, down in the uh, description. But yeah, I'd basically been after this and it was on PlayAsia and stuff, but I just messaged James and said, look, how much can you get this for? And he got it for me for a decent price. So um, yeah, cheers for that. But again, oh, again, uh, it was a bit more pricey. This one's like more like 35, 40, but you get seven really, really good beat em ups in there. So you've got Final Fight, King of Dragons, Cap Co uh, Captain Commando, Knights of the Round, awesome. Um, what else we got? Powered Gear, Battle Circuit, and uh, what's it called? Um, shit, what, what's the one where it's like... Um, God, my memory's gone. Anyway, it's the one where, you're, where it's like uh, sort of more medieval setting. Um, yeah, I'll forget, but yeah, brilliant collection of uh, beat em ups so definitely look that one up on the switch uh, and another switch thing I got was uh, I got sent this um, wireless game controller so it's like the SNES style uh, so basically I've been looking for a second controller for the switch because I've got a pro controller but they're like 60 quid um, even if you get one used, they don't come down in price that much. So I'm looking for a second controller for ages, and I was like, mm, you know, I don't want to get some shit one, some shit quality one, because I've seen some ropey ones. Um, so BitBoy, who make these, contacted me and said, you know, would I be interested in um, one of these? And it is actually really good. It's 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 called the SNES style, so it's like a transparent blue and it's got the SNES style buttons there um, and I was expecting it to be really sort of lightweight and poor quality but in fact it's um, I forget what it was I did weigh them both I think the Pro Controller is about maybe 230 grams and this is 206 grams or maybe it wasn't even that much in it or maybe it was this was 206 and the Pro was 224 so um, I thought, oh, this does feel light um, originally, but then when I felt it with the Pro Controller, it doesn't feel light at all, but it does feel really, really nice. And I had a good session on this on Mario Kart with some mates, and we all kind of used this one and the Pro one. And uh, yeah, everybody liked it. Everybody thought it was a decent controller. It's got, um, you know, decent buttons and everything. And uh, I can't complain. But the, the point is, this was 20 quid on Amazon, so I'll leave a link uh, down below to where you can pick one of these up. So if you're looking for a second Switch controller, you can't go wrong with this for 20 quid at the end of the day. And then uh, last Switch thing was um, something that, uh, this is kind of a long story, but four, over four years ago, nearly four and a half years ago, I backed Toe Jam and L into the groove, uh, back in the groove, um, into the grooves, the Madonna song. Um, yeah, on uh, Kickstarter. And when I backed it on Kickstarter, they only had a physical copy on PC. So because I wanted a physical box, I ordered the PC version, even though I'm not really a big PC guy. Um, and then subsequently this, that and the other happened over the years and now you can buy it on you know, Xbox One, PS4 and Switch. So I did order one from Limited Run on Switch and this isn't actually a limited game, they just were selling them via Limited Run and they made as many as they sold basically. Um, so this is still sealed because I actually have this on PS4 but I think um, I will give it a good go on Switch. I won't be leaving this sealed, I will be actually playing this. Um, and I, you get a little uh, 
limited run Toe Jam and card there with it. But yeah, I do also have my backer box from the Kickstarter which has arrived, which I'll show you in a sec. Um, so yeah, the backer box came, so this is PC version uh, actually on disc, so I think it's got a Steam code in there and a disc, but I've got a Steam code already, like when the Kickstarter um, was kind of, they were delivering the rewards, I did get a Steam code already, which I think I still have, haven't used, because I've obviously got it on the PS4 as well. So I ended up with a Steam code, a PS4 code, <clears throat> the Switch version, there's a Steam code in here, so it's like, ended up with far too much stuff. Um, but yeah, nice box. Um, I, I don't know. I'm in two minds about this because I I might keep it, but I might just keep the Switch version and get rid of this. I don't know. That's why I haven't opened it. It's still sealed. But it's got the game on CD. It's got some stickers and badges and some other like little things in there. Oh, and the soundtrack as well. But um, yeah, I'm kind of in two minds about opening it because I haven't decided whether I'm just going to sell it on and keep the Switch version yet. Um, so one more modern game I'm going to kind of shoehorn in because I forgot to show it was uh, this. It's Fighting EX Layer on the PS4. Um, now I hadn't heard of this game. I didn't even know it existed until Drew, um, what's he calling himself now? Um, I can't remember. He's just changed his channel name, but uh, people know Drew anyway. I'll leave a link to him down in the description. But he showed this on a video, and uh, it's kind of a spiritual successor to Street Fighter EX. So if you've ever played that series, and I played Street Fighter EX Plus Alpha probably more than any PlayStation One game, possibly more than any other game ever in my teens. Maybe maybe Goldeneye more, but. Um, I played that game to death. My friends and I would just drink and play that game constantly. So uh, if you know the EX series, it's actually de developed by Arika and published by Capcom. So it had Street Fighter characters and then it had these new characters for the Street Fighter EX series. So um, characters like Skullamania, um, uh, Crackerjack, Pullum, um, who else is in there? Uh, D Dark, um, Garuda, like amazing characters. So you can see there on the back um, that a lot of the characters are in this game. So there's no Street Fighter characters in this game. Um, so it's got, yeah, you can see Skullamania there, um, Kairi, uh, Blair, D Dark, Crackerjack there, um, Garuda, Darun. But yeah, I mean, Wicked game, really good game. I don't really play these games often because I only play them with mates, and it's not often I get to have like a modern gaming session with mates. But um, definitely one to look up. I think it's Japanese only release, um, so I had to import this. Um, or was it this one? Maybe it was this one that uh, I think it was actually this one that James Busby got me. It wasn't um, the Capcom beat 'em up collection. I must have bought that straight from somewhere. Um, but yeah, I think it was this one he sourced for me, um, and it came. Uh, it was used, but it's like mint condition, and it was really, really, really good price. So that was like 30, 35. I forget what I paid for the Capcom beat 'em up one. Um, but yeah, it's basically a th th sort of pseudo 3D beat em up because it's like a 2D beat em up, but 3D ish graphics. Um, and yeah, just awesome, man. Like, it's got the similar moves to the Street Fighter series, but uh, really wild characters and really, really good fun. Um, definitely recommend you pick this up. If I can remember, I'll stick some footage or whatever in the corner and you, you can have a look, or just Google Fighting EX Layer on the PS4. And you'll see some videos of it, it looks uh, amazing and it plays really well. I've been really, really enjoying it, what I have played of it. Um, next pickup, really random thing. I don't really buy stuff like this, but um, I saw these. These are the, uh, what are they called? Ko Kotobukiya um, Star Wars figures. And they make, they're kind of like little mini statues, 1 to one 10 scale. Um, yeah, they do like Marvel ones, they do Star Wars ones, but I saw this Atat Driver one, and I always loved the kind of style of him. And uh, 
he's over here. Um, so I ended up getting this on eBay, reasonably cheap, uh, like maybe 30 quid. But they, some of them go for silly money, these things. Um, but it comes with this like magnetic base. So you just plonk the guy on there. Um, but the detail on this is crazy. Uh, let me just switch this to autofocus. Yeah, I mean, the detail on this guy is nuts. Really amazing. I always loved the look of the ATAT driver. And he comes with three sets of arms. So there's one set of arms, which is this one holding the gun. And then uh, I won't get them out of the box. They're in the box, but hopefully you can see on the back here, um, you've got one where he's got his hands behind his back and one really cool one where he's like putting a glove on there. Um, but they look awesome. They all look really cool. And um, yeah, I've just had that little statue sat over there next to the B and O, and it looks really cool. It's, like I said, oh, like I said, not really something I often buy, but um, yeah, I couldn't pass this up. I absolutely love it. I, I, sure, I saw, uh, I think Steve Gasshead picked up one of these, uh, one of these as well. I don't know which one he got, but I don't think it was the Attack driver. But yeah, chuff with that. It looks awesome, man. If you if you Google Art FX on eBay or look it up on eBay or whatever. Um, that's the series, it's called Art FX. And uh, they, yeah, like I said, they do loads of Star Wars ones and all sorts. Um, and then what we got, oh yeah. I had, I've had these for probably like a year because I keep forgetting to show them in pickup videos, but I got these little game consoles top trumps and they're from the Center for Computing History in Cambridge. Um, and yeah, they're literally just like little console top trumps. Um, really cool, really, really nice little presentation in this little cassette um, cassette box there. Yep, that was cool. I can't remember how much they were. They were like a tenner or something, but honestly, it was, it was literally a year ago I bought those. Uh, Dreamcast game. Now this, I've been waiting for this to get a physical release for ages. And that is Volgar the Viking. So um, that was released years ago on the Dreamcast, but it never got a proper physical release. Uh, and it got one through this company called Pixel Heart. So they made 3,000 of these. So this is number 207 of 3,000 uh, Dreamcast PAL Volgar the Viking. Um, so yeah, it's kind of like a little... Um, a little like platformy game very 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 difficult from what I hear but um, I was always tempted to buy this and, and on like Steam or something and play it but um, I always held off for the Dreamcast version so I haven't actually played this yet it hasn't been here long it's been here a couple of weeks or a few weeks and um, obviously having been moving and everything haven't had the chance to get stuck into that but chuffed to get a physical copy of that and it was very cheap which is nice to see for like a new Dreamcast release sometimes they gouge you a bit, but it was it was like 20 quid or something. It was really cheap um, This one um, I've had this box and manual for Years and didn't have a cart for it and I managed to grab one off was it CEX or was it eBay? I forget it was CX or eBay, but it's 12 quid and it was uh, Strider 2 so yeah, I've had there's a couple of Mega Drive boxes I've got that are just the box and manual and I kind of half keep an eye out for you know if a cart turns up and it, like, yeah I managed to get one for 12 quid so now that's nice and complete um, really nice condition all round um, cart's pretty decent but the, the manual is really really nice um, and I haven't really had much experience with Strider 2 on the Mega Drive. I was a big Strider guy when I was growing up, so I had the original Strider on the Mega Drive, but Strider 2, no, so I'll be getting stuck into that soon as well. I've got lots of games to play, and now um, I've got this new game room set up. It's kind of, it's been pulled back a lot. You'll see when I show you around the room that I've gotten rid of a lot of stuff, and it's, the room is designed 
to play games rather than have wall tour games show, showing off and everything and it, it, it's really set up so I can come in here and play and I have been doing that a fair bit um, in here playing Vetrex this morning in fact um, another one that I kind of Frankensteined from bits was this now this popped up on uh, eBay box only uh, which is Full Throttle and if you guys know me you know I'm a big big LucasArts fan now Full Throttle was a reasonably reasonably late one um, what was it 95 probably um, but yeah this one was like Tim Schafer's first lead uh, you know first game that he took lead on so it, it was on eBay I think these go for like 40 quid plus complete and uh, the box was on eBay, really, really nice box. It had the manual, um, all the gubbins, but it had no game. And the guy wanted 17 quid for it. And I know for a fact you can buy the game for like a couple of quid on eBay. So I grabbed this and then I just ordered the game separately. So uh, what came with this was, um, you got the, the mini official player's guide there. Um, yeah, which is kind of little bits about the game and little hints and stuff. Um, and then it did actually have uh, it did actually have the CD case, and that had the um, you know it had the fr the front sleeve and then the manual inside and everything. It had all the stuff. It just had no disc. Um, and there's a couple of like the registration cards in there and stuff and there's a full throttle IBM PC CD-ROM reference guide in there um, so I did look on eBay and and it was uh, it was the same price to get the CD than it was to get the entire thing again so I bought this for it was 99p and then I paid a little bit for postage um, so a couple of quid uh, and yeah that completes it it's got the disc in there, all really nice nick. So I managed to get a complete full throttle for about 20 quid, which is half of what it's worth, which is really, really awesome. That's going to go on the shelf with the uh, the big box PC stuff, a lot of LucasArts stuff up there. Um, so that's starting to look awesome. There's a couple of gaps I've got in like the Amiga and the PC collection that I want to fill, but uh, some of them are really expensive like um, you know like the old first person shooters like Heretic and Hexen and Blood and Shadow Warrior some of them go for absolutely mental money um, now last few bits is some Amiga stuff now Amiga like I said trying to fill some gaps uh, so story time uh, so this game comes with a note and it says, Pete, this game has been staring at me for the longest time. I think it wants to come home. I don't want to keep you waiting any longer than you already have. This does not mean, of course, that you are excused from getting your ass over here. Enjoy the game and hopefully see you soon. Your friend, Walter. And that is from your friend of mine, Walter the Highlander, uh, over in Holland. So this is um, the story behind that. And it just shows how awesome this community is on YouTube. That um, it was an Amiga video I made ages ago. I can't even remember the video, or maybe it was like a Bitmap Brothers video or something to do with the Amiga. And someone commented on, uh, in the comments section saying, "Oh, yeah, you know, I've got an Amiga that I had from childhood and a load of games, but no one wants it, and not even my friends will take it. So unfortunately, it's going in the bin because I'm moving house." And I'm thinking, oh my god, this guy's moving house and he's going to bin a load of Amiga stuff. Like, you know, I know lots of people in YouTube. Someone might be able to pick it up. I'll message him. So I, I, I replied to him going, no, 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 don't bin it. Um, I'll, I'll send someone to get it. Like, where do you live? I'm sure I know someone who's near enough. I'll get someone to come and get it all. And uh, he just replied saying, well, this was on a Saturday right this uh, this conversation was happening on a Saturday and the guy says well actually I live in Rotterdam um, never mind I, I, and I have to move on Monday morning so it's got to go by tomorrow so 
sorry, you know, see you later. Um, so I uh, I clicked on his username and I fa I went to his I had a link to his Facebook. I messaged him on Facebook going, look, you know, I said I've got mates all over the place. I'll see if someone can pick it up from Rotterdam tomorrow, as in on the Sunday. So I messaged Mark um, Lacto and I messaged Walter saying, look, can either of you guys pick up this Amiga bundle tomorrow in Rotterdam? And uh, yeah, they they were helpful. Walter drove there the next morning picked up this massive Amiga bundle and it ended up being like an Amiga 500 and an absolute ton of uh, boxed games some really nice sort of high-end games in there and uh, I said to him look I just want this one game because I only really collect Amiga big box stuff if it's something that means something to me from childhood and this does <clears throat> so we kept this game for me and we flipped the rest the same day because uh, this guy Walter knows who's like a trader in the in the it was in his town and um, the guy came and gave us like a few hundred euros for the bundle um, so Walter and I split that down the middle we made a little bit of money and I got to keep this but most importantly we saved a load of Amiga stuff from going in the bin um, which was great you know that was as stupid as it sounds although it's nice to make a few quid um, it was the it was the horror and the thought of all that Amiga stuff going in the bin because they don't make any more of this stuff and there's a lot of collectors out there that will give those things good homes. Um, so yeah, anyway, the game that Wow to kept for me was Xenon 2 Mega Blast and you can see this is the kind of quality that the bundle was in. It is like you've just pulled it off the shelf in uh, the 90s, you know, absolutely mint. I had fond memories of this game because I still remember the Christmas that my mum and dad got me this game and uh, I stuck it in the Amiga and I absolutely loved it and big big uh, Bitmap Brothers fan so that's going to be a uh, pride of place on the shelf. Thank you Walter for keeping hold of that and yes I still will visit um, even though even though I've got the game I'll definitely come and visit you mate. Um, and then last but certainly not least I got this bundle on eBay and uh, a little bit half disappointing so um, I'll show you the, the the less exciting game first so uh, the guy said he combined postage so I just chucked this in uh, for six quid and it is a little bit battered if you can see there on the back it's a little bit battered so it's lemmings for the Amiga obviously um, which is a shame, but the uh, the main thing that I couldn't tell, I don't know if you'll be able to even see it, if I try and catch the light on the back there, um, that if you can see it there, there's a load of pen marks where someone's obviously put a bit of paper on here and used it to lean against to write an address and it's made really bad indentation on the back. So it is, it's fucked basically. Um, so I did message the guy going, look, I'm not overjoyed about that. And he gave me half my money back. So it cost me three quid this. Um, I don't think I want to keep it even for three quid because it's just not good enough quality. So I'll probably try and move that on. Oh, something I forgot to mention. Xenon 2, um, we, we didn't realise it's been at Wouters for like, God knows, like two years. But it's only got disc one, it hasn't got disc two. So if anyone who's into Amiga like Steve, uh, Cine Steve or Mike um, or anyone comes across a disc two for Xenon 2, let me know because I need it. Or uh, Paul, Mr. Bad, if you, if you see one. So the other game that came, that I bundled Lemmings in with was, uh, was this. And it's another LucasArts game that I've been after for a while to fill, fill in the collection. And yeah, a bit of a LucasArts theme here, like Full Throttle, Star Wars figure, um, the uh, Thimbleweed Park. Um, yeah, a bit of an inadvertent LucasArts theme today. Um, but yeah, the game is uh, Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis on the Amiga. Absolutely brilliant game. Um, I know this is Stu Tootie's favourite Amiga game. And yeah, fair play. It's, it's such a great... Um, adventure game point and click and it actually had uh, you know Spielberg involved with writing the story and they they properly invested in making it like a really um, 
cinematic story. I think that it might have even been like an idea for a script for a movie originally and it kind of evolved into being a game. Um, but yeah, this was a beast. Uh, 11 discs like uh, Monkey Island 2, so absolutely huge game. So we've got all 11 discs in there. Um, we've got the manual and uh, some rego registration cards and stuff. And then you've got a little uh, instruction sheet showing you how to control in, f in fist fights and this, that and the other. Um, and then uh, what's that last disc we got in there? Um, it's got a random disc in there which might be saves or something, I don't know. But yeah, um, it's got all 11 discs and then that save disc. Let me just pop these back in. So yeah, I was bidding on that at an auction on eBay. It is lovely, Nick. Um, absolutely can't fault it at all. Really, really nice, beautiful condition. And uh, it was about 29 quid I won that for. So yeah, chuffed for that for 29 quid. So guys, I think that's pretty much it for pickups. Um, yeah, if there's anything else, I can't remember it. But yeah, I'll put all that stuff away and then there'll be a room tour coming in the next couple of weeks, two, three weeks, four weeks, uh, where I'll show you the new game room and the new setup and everything, because it's small. The new game room is smaller, but it's all 100% mine. So in the old game room, I had kind of a bigger room, but I had a small portion of that room and everything was really cramped in. And although it's very small here, I've got a really nice big old armchair. Um, we got uh, three screens set up We got uh, and the Vectrex and we got all the stuff set up like really nicely to play games. So I'm really, really chuffed um, with how it's all set up. So that was my reasonably quick pickups, guys. I always try to make these things quick, but they never work out that way. So God knows how long this video is going to end up being. But yeah, I kind of wanted it all out of the way for, um, for the upcoming room tour. So I'll see you very, very soon. Cheers.